outside looking in, that's the one that's called room view. And then a camera behind me that says art wall. And then one in the other corner um, called downlight, which is looking back at me. Um, so typically before um, talking about how we're using Ketra in the space, we just want to talk about color temperature for a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to illuminate this back wall with range. With a range of color temperatures. And what you're going to see here is um, on the bottom art wall, a range of basically uh, what the sun can produce from the warmest, like a sunrise or a sunset, to um, cloudy afternoon, you know, midday sun with, with cloud dispersion, which is like the bluest, whitest light, your, your mountain light almost. Um, this camera doesn't show the far, far right, which is even warmer here. It's like candlelight. And this is going from 1800 degrees Kelvin the whole way to 10,000 degrees Kelvin. So what you're seeing in the middle is the range of the sun and the range of the catcher bulb goes beyond that. So it goes from fire to even bluer than blue light. Um, and then typically these middle three here are what you're going to see in residential and commercial applications. So like in, in a home, you're probably going to see this middle one is like 3000 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes in like offices or institutions, hospitals, you'll see cooler like 3,400 degrees here. Restaurants or homes might be 2,700. And then, you know, for really cozy atmosphere, you might go down to uh, 22 or 2,400 degrees. Um, do, you, do you guys specify color temperatures on your bulbs typically, or is that coming from? Uh, yeah, typically we're at around 27 or 3,000, depending on yeah. client's preference. Yeah, depending on client's preference, depending on kind of your finish of the space, if you put a lot of, you know, marble, white walls, you might want to air on the cooler side. If you've got more woods and warm uh, elements, then, then going towards 2,700. Uh, also preference. Also, interestingly enough, uh, in Asian countries, they prefer cooler color temperatures. Huh. In the U.S., we prefer warmer color temperatures. Um, and uh, and yeah, but you know, typically you pick that bulb color temperature, and, and that's what it is. It's that temperature day and night, and it's uh, it's going to be what it's going to be regardless of, of, of where it's at. So with Ketra, we have the ability to really tune the color temperature based on what we're illuminating and then also based on the time of day. So as designers, we all get to have a little bit of fun with this because we can look at different materials and use different color temperatures to light it. And if we don't like what we've done, we can change our mind later and there's no problems in doing that. It's all in software. But then also the biggest benefit that we see is that the color temperature automatically changes throughout the day. So you're going to see that happen in a little bit. I'm going to run through that. But first, we'll talk about some of the illumination in the space. If you look at the downlight, I'm, I'm illuminating this brick wall over here in the painting with a, a warmer color temperature. Uh, and we chose it to bring out the richness of the color and the yellows of the multiple layers of paint. This is walls about 100 years old and it's got you know seven or eight different layers of paint and uh, you know warm color temperature makes the wood and the paint look really nice um, with the table here sometimes this translates sometimes it doesn't uh, but in person it really is a neat effect we are illuminating this table with a block get it there uh, a cooler color temperature, and I'm going to shift it to a warmer color temperature, and you'll see the richness of the wood kind of coming out. I'll we'll go back and you can see the difference again. So that's the difference between 2700 and 2400 degrees on that wood. Mm -hmm. Going back now to um, give it a second, and it'll go back to mm -hmm. 27 or, or 24. Sorry, so there's 24. Mm -hmm. So we can really tune each of these. And in addition to the, the wood spot, we have a spot on this piece of art that we've put on the wall to create um, kind of a museum style lighting. Mm -hmm. But this is actually our wallpaper TV. So this is a television. And you can see how thin the television is. And it sticks to the wall magnetically. It's four millimeters thick. And we kind of 
Uh, we match color temperature of the white light of the TV to the white light of the artwork to give the illusion that it's um, reflecting the light instead of self-illuminating. Hmm. Cool. A fun little trick with our gallery TV. <laughs> So those are examples of where we like to use warm color temperatures, uh, cooler color temperatures, obviously when you have color at stake or white walls. So we're using a 4,000 degree color temperature for the, the art wall now. And at this color temperature, oh, you might recognize this. That's one of your jobs right there. Oh yeah, that's uh, Daniel's <laughs> line, right? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> um, let's see, any, of, any others of yours? No. Um, so yeah, so the colors really pop in this using 4000. I'll switch it to 700. You might be able to see the color of the um, art gets a little bit duller and then the white walls don't look as white. Um, also the cameras adjust <laughs> their color temperature so it's not as dramatic as when you're in, sorry, as when you're in the space itself it's not nearly as uh, it's it's much more dramatic because your eyes don't make that adjustment um so white level um cooler better for uh crisper more contrast uh and then also in this instance above us where we're using that linear light so those were the ketra um s30 spotlights track lights and then you can see in the room view we're now eliminating the ceiling with that um, cove light. So you see the little cove trench and then the cove light is eliminating the ceiling. And if you look up behind my head, you'll see where there used to be a skylight in mm -hmm. my camera. That's all yeah. boarded up because it's ancient. And we wanted to kind of recreate that skylight feel. So that's why we did that track up there. And we're using a color temperature that's cooler, again, to simulate midday sun. So as mm -hmm. the sun passes, that would get warm. So not only is it emulating kind of the consistency and the texture of the light, but it's also emulating the color temperature of a skylight if we were at, you know, still have some skylight up there. Huh. Well, again, a yeah, fun little thing we did. <laughs> um, so in addition to choosing color temperatures that we want to eliminate different surfaces with, Ketra will shift those color temperatures throughout the day. So it's going to start off warm and dim and then brighten up and go to bluer color temperatures to match the outside light. So I'm gonna step you through kind of a 12 hour progression and you're gonna see the room view. This is morning before the sun has risen and then you're gonna to start to move into like a sunrise environment. The sun's coming up over the horizon, it's getting brighter, it's getting bluer and now it's kind of in that midday, bright overhead blue sky. And as it moves through the afternoon, you're going to start to feel it warm up a little bit now. And it's getting, you know, warmer, closing, closer to sunset. And, you know, this is maybe when you're coming home and starting to go into the evening. This would be when you're making dinner and then you're getting ready to go off to bed. And where it's going to land is if you were to get up in the middle of the night and turn the light on, we can program it to 3%, 1%, 0.1%. Right now it's at 0.1%. So you can see how incredibly dim these lights are. This is very hard to do, as you know. And every single petrol light will dim this way for us. You know, again, we kind of get this performance for free. So if you look at the art wall and see how dim these lights are, um, you know, how shallow the lighting is, and it's really soft. So great for bedrooms, theater rooms, media room, um, where you want to just maintain. Um, you know, some, some light in the evening, um, but not have it too bright. Cool. So in addition to awesome dimming performance and full range of white level, mm -hmm. white light, we get a full range of RGB color. So we'll throw a couple of different colors on this back wall once the camera focuses. <laughs> we'll get it from a second there. Super that, great. Yeah, so you can see it's really fun uh, way to display colors. Mm -hmm. While I don't recommend like coming home and turning all your lights orange, um, it can be fun to use for parties or events to highlight different areas. 
Yeah. Um, also, red light does have a very uh, useful application in that it um, doesn't produce melatonin, doesn't um, trigger your brain to, uh, to suppress melatonin, so you don't end up waking yourself up at night. So if you really want to be cognizant of your circadian rhythms, if you turn the lights on in the middle of the night, we can program it so the lights turn on red. And then you're not going to disrupt your sleep cycles, but you can still see your way to you know, the bathroom or whatever you need to do in the middle of the night. Plus, we like to have a little bit of fun. So for St. Patrick's Day, we did turn our lights green and white stripes. <laughs> nice. Sports so that's, that's what those G2 linears we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Have you guys installed this in any like full on residential projects or galleries yet? Yeah. Or yeah? Yeah, a, a lot. We're we have four really large projects where we're currently installing them in. We've installed them in a few homes. Mm -hmm. Um the largest home we're doing has four full rooms, but they're it's it's massive. It's like a twenty thousand square foot um, Place in the West wow. Village, so a good like forty percent of the house is, is having Ketra lighting installed. Oh wow! And then we're doing a um, pottery studio actually right around the corner here in Greenpoint. Oh, cool! And then we have it, you know, in, in a number of different spaces um, where it's just been for specific rooms. Yeah, and for the residential projects, was it like the client's preference to have these installed, yeah. and it's like their like they want like that full customizable option? Yeah, so the first few residential projects, the, the client was interested in it, um, mm -hmm. specifically Ketra, and then another one, they were interested in having color tuning and then mm -hmm. know, kind of showed them that, well, the interesting thing is is white level tuning. And now it's something, you know, it's kind of like shades, like we're bringing it to the conversation yeah. when we talk to a client to let them know that this is a possibility. Mm -hmm. Because even if you never want to turn your lights purple, which is kind of, <laughs> you know, most people, um, yeah. the, the benefit of the circadian lighting that happens automatically every day is tremendous. Yeah. And then, you know, what I'll show you here in just a minute, I'll show you the art, the benefits is, and so yeah, so there's, there's kind of four primary benefits, like, compelling reasons why you would use Ketra. Mm -hmm. And one is, is you love colored lights and you wanna have fun with the colored lights. The other is you're big into art and you want the art to look as the best way it possibly can. And you wanna have some flexibility around the way the art, the art is rendered. Mm -hmm. And then the other would be, you're big into wellness and yeah. you want to have the circadian rhythm. And then the other would be kind of performance and finishes. You know, you have beautiful marble walls, you have a nice wood accoutrement. You want, again, everything in your home to look at its best. And, uh, and I'll show you kind of again, too, when you shift the color temperature, when you open the light, to have the light matching the outside. Um, mm -hmm. Both has that circadian wellness benefit as well mm -hmm. as um, benefits the aesthetic of the space. Yeah. Oh, well, it's definitely an interesting product. Hopefully you get yeah. to use it. So I'll show yeah. you the art, um, the art example, and then the, the kind of just wrap it up with the uh, matching the inside to outside light. Um, so in addition to the color changing, uh, the RGB, mm -hmm. we can create white light by mixing RGB together or illuminating the white light diode. So in this case, we're just using the white diode, but if we overdrive the RGB and reduce the white, mm -hmm. we can shift the vibrancy. So if you look at my screen here, this is now in standard vibrancy. So this is how we would illuminate art. You can look both in the room view and in my view. Mm -hmm. And this is a standard color temperature. I think it's 3,400 degrees. And we're not gonna change the color temperature. We're just gonna change the color spectrum. So this is high vibrancy. And you'll oh. notice the colors kind of pop a little bit more. The saturation yeah. of each image changes. So if you look at the blues. Yeah, it's brighter. They change, the reds are really gonna change a lot, the saturation, and then you can see how it changes the rendering of the whites in the middle as well. Yeah. So again, um, 
depending on the type of paint and the type of color that was used, whether it was painted with organic paints or inorganic paints or painted in sunlight or painted by candlelight, you might be able to get a more accurate representation of what the artist saw. Yeah. Um, by Do you adjusting. know if there are any galleries that have implemented this yet? Or if to you. Yeah, so there's a really neat case study for the Chicago Institute of Art. Really? And, and I really love what they did because we're finding the exact same thing with like Dustin Yellen. And they uh -huh. chose to illuminate the walls with a slightly cooler color temperature to uh -huh. make the walls white and crisp. And then the statues, which had more earthy tones and more marble, you know, kind of browns and colors with a warmer color temperature. So the the sculptures would kind of step off mm -hmm. the, the, the wall a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a couple of photos and a couple of examples at the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, you know, we've talked to a couple of galleries and what's neat about it is because the standard H-Track, if there's H-Track that's illuminating the artwork, you can just take the H-Track down and put the Ketra in. Huh. And then there's not a lot of back-end electrical work. Yeah. And in a retrofit standpoint, Ketra really makes the electrical work much, much easier again. So we're seeing a lot of cost savings there. Um, so yeah, it, it, you know, again, to us, it's just a matter of we need to start communicating it to gallerists because it makes a tremendous difference. And once they see it, you know, I took this to Dustin Yelms. It just had four bulbs and we eliminated his artwork and he goes, Great. How many do you have in your truck? I want them all. He's like, let's just do it everywhere. And I'm like, I gotta order some for you. But he's like, okay, we'll just order them, put them everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a matter of, of, of kind of educating people again. That's why we wanted to invest in the show. And you know, talk mm -hmm. talk to you about this because that's the best way we know to get, get the word something out about installed. This. Yeah. And you know it's yeah. easy for us. We have a demo kit. We can take it and illuminate people's artwork or marble or floor or whatever. Mm -hmm. Show them what it's going to look like in their gallery, in their home. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we've we've done that in a number of places. Um, we're we're doing it for a number of Dustin Yellen's clients. We just finished a home in Beacon, uh, where you know it's like, hey, we want to illuminate the Yellen, and then it's like, do you want to do the rest of the house? And they see it in action and they say yes. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of how we're we're handling it. Cool. Well, it'll be so, interesting. Anyway, for the grand for the grand finale here, I'll show you the difference that this makes once we start to bring the natural light back in. So right mm -hmm. now we're, we're at 2700 degrees Kelvin, which is your standard light temperature, which you would probably choose in most um, residential applications, which is nice. It's comfortable, especially at night. But as mm -hmm. we open this drape here, you're going to see how blue the outside light is. Oh, whoops, I pressed it twice. It works a little differently when I, here we go. I have to keep that shade open for the, the camera outside. Um, so you're, you're gonna see the difference here. Let's see if I'm pointing in the right camera. If you look in the downlight image, so mm -hmm. like how blue the light is over here, but mm -hmm. then the white light isn't as white in the room. And the down lights and on the wall, mm -hmm. and on my face, it doesn't match. So if we switch to the natural show, which is Ketra's natural progression, you're gonna see the light get bluer, cooler. Mm -hmm. And now, now we're matching. Now we're matching the out to the end. So you'll see mm -hmm. those down light, the color temperature, these down lights here, they're matching now the color temperature of the outside much better. Oh. I'll go back to 2700. So you see how I warm up. Yeah. This is this is nice for like the evening, but in the middle of the day, this isn't really the best light. The walls are yeah. yellow. I don't feel as energized. Mm -hmm. Colors aren't popping the same way when I go to natural. This is what you want the room to be like during the day. It yeah. matches the outside light. You feel more and everything feels sharper and crisper. So that level of flexibility, you know, to, to me, to us, that's really the, the kind of the most compelling reason is it just makes sense. You want the outside light and the inside light to match. Yeah. 